why am I even saying don't ask these questions? It's not like they're wrong questions, right? Well, what if I told you that some questions have subjective answers which are not in the best of your interest or they have outdated information or you can answer the questions yourself and better. Hey friends, this is Axi, your favorite YouTube architect. I've heard many questions asked at house viewings and reflecting upon them, I think I in my humble opinion, that there are some questions which are definitely worth skipping. And when I say that they are worth skipping or that you shouldn't take their answers into account or that they're relevant or whatever I will say in this video, it's not that I mean that the questions are wrong in themselves. Like, I don't think that the questions are wrong, okay? The questions show genuine interest and are valid most of the time. Questions are good. The more questions, the better. My point of this video is that the answer to these questions might not be the most relevant ones or the most genuine ones or they can just be something that you shouldn't take into account at all. So I wanted to make this video for anyone going to viewings, to houses or apartments and wanting to make the best objective choice and not be influenced by some pieces of information that they hear at viewings or randomly that are actually not relevant to their choice. Here's the questions, here's how you can reformulate them to get a better answer. And also a quick recap at the end about the questions that I would definitely ask in any case. Let's get to it. The first question, has there been much interest? Also known as, have there been many viewings? Sometimes I even hear the answer to this question without anyone even asking the question. Like the real estate agent or the owner would say, you know, there has been a lot of interest in this property. Now, the problem that I see with this question or and with this answer is the fact that nobody is ever interested to say that there hasn't been much interest in the property because that would automatically mean that maybe the price would be perceived too high or like the buyer wouldn't feel like a pressure to make a decision fast. So I've generally never heard anyone say there hasn't been interest in the property. It's always a lot of interest. No matter how many properties I've seen, they all have interest in them. Even if they aren't sold three months later, it's still with a lot of interest, apparently. So, yeah. And just think about it. How would it be if the real estate agent would say, no, there hasn't been any interest in this. Nobody cares about this. Nobody has seen this. You're the first one in three months. Nobody's gonna say that. Like Nobody's ever gonna say that. This also raises the question, okay, but what if the real estate agent says that there's someone else waiting for a mortgage for this or waiting for the bank or waiting for something and they really want to get it, but they're waiting for something to get this property. Again, not relevant. I know that this wants to be like a super high pressure on the buyer to make a decision fast because there's someone else on the line. But actually, like, are you going to make an offer just because someone else made an offer? No. Are you going to make an offer because someone else didn't make an offer? No. You're just gonna make an offer if you think that property is a good investment, regardless of how many offers there are or there aren't. It's just your choice. Like, are you going to make an offer sooner? Like, are you going to rush in this decision? I also hope not. When making such a big money investment, you wouldn't want to rush in any way or you to feel pressured by any basically foreign buyers into making this decision. You're gonna make that decision fully based on objective or subjective criteria, not on someone else's credit or someone else making an offer. It's just, you're gonna make an offer or not. It doesn't depend on the interest in the market in that property. Next question, does it come furnished? Not to be confused with what is on the property deeds. It's very important to ask what's on the property deeds. An apartment might have a parking lot or a storage space or a plot of land might have a house in a garage and sometimes like the garage, maybe it's not on the property. So it's good to know what is actually in the papers. That is a very valid question. The real estate agent usually knows all of this and can tell you straightforward. But does it come furnished is a whole other category. Sometimes I also hear the answer to this question without anyone asking anything about this. The real estate agent or the seller would say, you know, it all comes furnished. As if it's the most marvelous thing in the world that someone else gives you their old furniture. The interior design and the furniture of an apartment or a house 
is not the real value of the house. It's not even close. It doesn't even make up any of the any percentage of the value of the house. Basically, uh, beds, chairs, and couches, and whatever, they don't add up almost any value to the property. And sometimes you would see these kind of properties with like 20%, 30, like even 50% more expensive than the rest of them just because they're furnished, not an actual value. The actual value does not reside in the furniture because furniture is very easy to find, to buy. It's also like a way smaller investment. So if you buy a chair and change your mind, it's not the end of the world to change it. Whereas for a property, it really is a way bigger investment. So when you hear the phrase, the owner leaves all furniture that should just go through your head unregistered. That's like to be ignored. It doesn't matter at all. That's not a real reason to choose a property. It's not like anyone chooses a property based on the furniture it has. And the only case in which you would do that would be probably if you would buy a castle, which will have historical, very unique furniture. That would be maybe the exception to this case. But in all the other cases, the furniture really really doesn't matter. This is a pause for the subscription prompt. So if you like this video so far, consider subscribing because that would encourage me to make more videos, maybe more often, maybe longer, maybe, maybe. Thank you. Third, can you change this wall or window or door? Also phrased as I want to demolish this and make and unite the living room in the, in the kitchen. Do you think that's possible? And also sometimes suggested without any questions through the phrase You can always demolish this and make this room bigger. Some neighbors, I don't know where, demolish this and make this room bigger. Real estate agents or sellers, they're, like, their basic interest is to sell this and they're like salespeople. They don't have any knowledge in architecture or construction and they cannot say that you can do this or that. Like some things are structurally impossible or maybe very expensive and it would be it would be a shame to base your decision for this for a very big investment thinking oh this is the plan i'm gonna unite these two rooms and make a big room that's the plan i'm gonna get it and do that and then you end up buying the property and then start working on it and you find out that actually you cannot do that very easily it costs like i don't know 20 or 30k to reinforce the beam or something so if you find yourself thinking like that uh, and making plans and you really really like a property and you really think this would be such a game changer if i can open these two rooms and put them together like it would like be awesome that is great that is very much a plan i agree with you but just do me a small favor and before making any purchases or starting works or anything, call a specialist, a structural engineer or an architect, preferably someone who has worked in renovations and asked for their advice. It's literally a 20 minute meeting. So the fourth question is, what are the neighbors like? This question also makes me laugh a bit because who would have any interest to tell you that the neighbors are awful? Nobody would ever tell you that, ever. Like they want to sell the property. They will never tell you the neighbors are awful. Most of the cases, they're not even awful. Most of the cases, the neighbors are awesome. How you could rephrase this to find more information is you can ask, are the neighbors tenants or owners? Or you can ask, are the neighboring properties vacant or is there someone living there? Or for example, if you see, um, like we saw in Andalusia, this very isolated plots of lands with houses, you can also ask, where is the closest neighbor and what do they do? How often do they come here? So basically more open-ended questions, not something that really asks for them to say the neighbors are awesome. Yeah. Also, if you want to be super extra and you want to find out more about this, you can actually ring the bell of the neighbors and, and see how they are and chat with them a bit. And if you want to be extra extra, you can ask the neighbors about the other neighbors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the deal. So the fifth question is, what is the neighborhood like? This is also a question that you can answer yourself. Again, nobody would have any interest to tell you that the neighborhood is bad or unfriendly. What I would do in this case is not ask this question and just go in the neighborhood, go in the neighborhood in different times of the day, in the morning, in the evening, in the midday, go to the restaurants, the shops, the parks, the supermarkets, everywhere, walk on the street, around the house, around the plot of the house, around the block of the house, also at different times 
and just spend some time there not too much like you don't have to spend too much time you can just go there for half a half an hour walk and then you will create your own impression of the neighborhood which is your own and is not influenced by anyone else and how someone else is the neighborhood that is way more valuable than what someone else tells you the sixth and last question that i want to address is what kind of rent would i get afterwards so in the case that you want to buy something as an investment or you're just thinking long term maybe you want to move out of there and rent it eventually you ask about the rent so this is a very important question to ask so why do i even say don't ask it i say don't ask it because you can ask it in your head and answer it yourself i say don't ask it out loud to someone else i say that because too much subjectivity can come from interested parties in this sale. So in this case, what I would do is I would say you must acknowledge the value of this question and the importance of this question. And then you must search for the answer yourself. So this takes 20 minutes. It's very easy. Just go on any immobilian site or real estate site and look at the rents in that neighborhood with the specific criteria of the property that you're looking for. And then you would have a way better comparison you can also see the state of the apartments you can see the prices and then you can see how the like sometimes you even have this analysis of how the market goes that will give you information based on data and it will also give you a margin like a uh, rent could be between this and this maybe it's if it's renovated and like super well said it will be this and then if it, if we just leave it like that and it's not that good then it will be this and now we have a quick recap of all the relevant questions i will ask anytime the first one the ultimate number first one all the time anytime is why are they selling and i'm well aware that i could get the dishonest answer with this one as well but if i suspect that i get a dishonest answer then i am way more careful with all the information that i get from that particular seller the second question that you should always ask is is the property registered and with all the papers up to date just to make sure that you know exactly what you're getting in the papers. The third one that I recently learned is who is the property in the name of? So how I learned about this is that I was advising a couple who were looking for an apartment and they really, really like an apartment. They made an offer for it. And through the discussions with one of the sellers, we found out that the apartment was in the name of five brothers. And eventually they never agreed to sell. So the deal can fall through, not because of your fault, but other people not wanting to make this decision. So it's, it's, it is it's how it is. The fourth one that I always ask is how long has it been on the market? This is good to know, maybe to find out about the price, if the price like went downwards or upwards. The fifth one, super important all the time, all the time, anytime. Are the owners open to negotiating? And usually it's very, it's very interesting. The real estate agent always knows the, the answer to this and they always know how much. So they, they either say from the start, they are not open to negotiating at all. So don't even try it because you won't get, you won't get any negotiation from them. Or they would say, yes, they're open to negotiating and this is their last price. So if you want to get it, you should offer this. The sixth question that I always just asking is, has there been anything similar sold in the area or have you uh, sold anything similar in the area if you're, if you're uh, dealing with a um, real estate agent? Even if you are super interested in that property or not, it's just good to know what are the prices, what are the conditions. I mean, you can also like for this one, you can also look on the sites and see what is being sold or not. But it's also, I also learned that this question is being answered very honestly almost all the time. And the real estate agent would say, well, I've sold a lot of apartments here, but only on the ground floor. You never know what you might find out and might be useful in your further search. Maybe you're open actually to changing some of your criteria that you have in exchange for like giving up something and getting a lower price. Seventh one, how much are the utility bills? I mean, this is a no brainer. Sometimes this information is public, sometimes not. And then the last two questions that I always ask are depending on the type of property. So for example, if, um, if I'm looking at the property in the city center or in the historic district, I always ask, is this a listed building? There's not, there's no problem with listing buildings. They are completely fine. It's just that it's good to know that they have certain limitations. The last question that we'll ask. So if it's not in the city center, if it's in like outside the city center, way in the suburbs, isolated sometimes, I would always ask, is it urban or rural land? This is also very important, again, to know of the limitations because each type of land has its own limitations. 
If it's urban land, that means that you can build more on that plot of land. If it's rural, that means you can build very, very little. So that was it for this video. I hope this is useful. I hope that at least some people could see some value in this and could make their own research and be more conscious about what other people are saying and not blindly trusting everything. If you like this video and you, and you want to find out more about like the process of buying or anything, I would recommend you to watch the property listings video. So yeah, see you soon.